What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a general overview of the SAP Business One solution. And what I'm going to be covering is our SAP Business One version for SAP HANA. I'm going to be showing you the very latest release, which is version 9. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by giving you a little bit of a look at the user interface of the solution. We're going to drill down and take a look at some of the detailed functionality. And then we're also going to look at some of the business intelligence capabilities of the solution. So let's get going. What you're looking at here is the main user interface of SAP Business One. When you first start the system, it asks you for a username and a password, and then on the basis of that username and password, it unlocks the functionality that you have access to. Now, it's important to remember that during this demonstration, I'm logged in as the super user. That means I have access to every single piece of functionality in the system. However, you have the ability to control and manage the level of access rights that each user in your organization has. So don't worry if I'm showing you some of the customization tools and you're thinking, well, gee, I really don't want everybody to have access to that functionality. You can simply switch that access off for those specific people. So when you start up SAP Business One, you'll see you get a welcome screen and you have the option to leave that on at any point in time or I can go in here and I can just click on the show this page at startup option, close that down and then that won't come up. Of course at any point in time you want to be able to get help. So up here on the main menu you can choose help and then you can go in and you can select the welcome screen again and there it is, up it comes. Which takes you to some of the documentation such as the easy start guide some user training materials that we have available for you, as well as the online help, the what's new documentation, and a glossary of the terms that you'll encounter when you're using SAP Business One. I'm gonna close this down though, and what you're looking at right now is what we call the cockpit. Now, what is the cockpit? Well, the cockpit is just the same as a pilot in an aeroplane has a series of instruments and um, gauges, if you like, that help them keep the plane flying in the right direction, keeps them up to date with what's going on. With SAP Business One, we have the same context or the same idea. What I'm looking at right now is my home cockpit, which I can customize specifically to meet my own requirements. But I also have a number of pre-built cockpits available in the system. For example, I have a cockpit for my sales team. I have a cockpit for the service team, for finance, and for purchasing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can build my own role-based cockpit. So I'm going to say, all right, what is the functionality that I need to have access to? So I simply go here and I choose my home cockpit. And then I have these things down here called widgets. Now the idea behind widgets are they're little pieces of functionality that just make it easy and quick for you to access uh, different areas of the software. First thing I want to do is I want to put my common functions widget across here in my cockpit. Now what's the common functions widget? Well, I'm able to go into SAP Business One and I can go into each one of the modules in the menu here like this and I can select the functionality from this menu. For example, if I want to go in and create a business partner, I can click here on Business Partners and Business Partner Master Data and it will bring that screen up for me. However, what I want to do is I don't want to have to go through all of those additional clicks. And I really don't want to be overwhelmed by all those different functions that are available there for me. So I know that every day I have to add business partners. So I simply go and I take this piece of functionality and I drag it across into my common functions widget. So then I know that uh, because I'm part of, for example, the sales team, I'm also responsible for creating sales opportunities in the system because one of the great things about SAP Business One is that we have customer relationship management functionality right throughout the entire application. So I'm gonna to need to use that, so I'll drag across my sales opportunity functionality. Now there's some reports I might wanna run on a daily basis. For example, my sales opportunity reports. I wanna look at my opportunities forecast over time. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look at that as an example of how reporting works in SAP Business One. 
And then uh, a couple of the other things that I might want to work with, well, it's great to manage sales opportunities, but sales opportunities hopefully will generate quotations for my potential customers and existing customers. And then I'll turn those quotations into sales orders, sales orders into deliveries, deliveries into invoices and so on. So I'll go here into my sales menu and I'll say, well, I need to use sales quotations. So I'll drag that across. I also need to use sales orders. So I'll drag that across. And I also want to create my accounts receivable invoices. So I'm going to drag that across here as well. Now that's pretty much everything that I need to do my job on a daily basis. However, bear in mind, and we understand that as a small or a mid-sized enterprise, sometimes you're responsible for doing many different jobs. So you can, for example, go in here and you might also be responsible for raising purchase orders. So you can go here into purchasing and you can drag the purchase order functionality across all the purchase requests. So I'll drag the purchase request across. So that's it. I've now got all of my common functions that I want. The next widget that I'm going to include in my, uh, my cockpit is I want to see all of my open documents. So I'll drag the open documents widget across here and drop that in. Now it's going to ask me specifically what documents do you want to keep track of? So all I need to do is I go up here and you'll see this little icon up in the top, uh, in the top corner. I'm Australian, we call it a spanner. Uh, if you're from the US you might call it a wrench or whatever the case may be, but I can uh, click on that and then I go in here and I say, all right, let's configure the settings for this widget. And it's going to ask me, what do you want to see in your open documents? Well, I want to see all the open sales quotations, all the open sales orders, and I also want to see all the purchase quotations that are currently open. And then I'm also able to see any service calls because when you purchase SAP Business One and you get a professional user license, you get access to all of this functionality. So that CRM capability not only includes the traditional things that you might be familiar with for Salesforce automation, but we also contain specific functionality around service management as well. So I'm going to now say OK, and you'll see now I have in my open documents widget just those documents that I've said that I want to monitor. I already have down here my messages and alerts widget. And the messages and alerts widget, what it allows you to do is it allows you to track any uh, alerts that come up in the system. And I'm going to explain to you what the alerts are in a little while. But it allows you to track all of that. And it also allows you to track any messages which other users of the system have sent to you. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the demonstration. So one other thing that I might want to add. I want to add a dashboard. So what are our dashboards? Well, dashboards are little pieces of functionality where you can define uh, a graphical representation of the information inside the system. So let's say, for example, I might want to see all of my customer balances. I might want to see my top five customers with outstanding balances. I can build a dashboard or I can use one of the pre-existing dashboards which we deliver with SAP Business One. And all I need to do is when I choose this dashboard, I'll pop it in here, I go in here and I say settings. And what it does, it allows me to see all the pre-built dashboards which come with SAP Business One. And I can pick the one that I want. So for example, I'm a salesperson, I might want to look at my sales analysis. So here's my sales analysis dashboard. I simply tick the box, I say OK, and then what you'll see is that dashboard now gets represented here in the screen. You're probably looking at that going, wow, that's really small, and you're right, it is. I can just resize this screen simply by dragging that down, all right? And now I've got a full picture of the data that's in the system. Now, 
right now you're looking at that going, well, there's actually nothing showing up in here. And that's right, I've set it up that way because I'm going to show you how, as I go through and enter in data into the system, these dashboards update in real time. So that's it, I've now customized my screen. I might want to add one more dashboard as well because depending on the size of your screen, you can incorporate multiple dashboards. So you can end up truly like a pilot in an aeroplane and have many different gauges uh, and dashboards showing you exactly what's going on in the business. So if you're the CEO of the organization, you can just fill your screen purely with dashboards showing you all of those key performance indicators. So with this dashboard that I'm going to add, I'm going to have a look at my sales employee performance target. So in this case, maybe I'm the sales manager of the organization, uh, so I want to keep an eye on how all of my salespeople are performing. So I can click on OK there, and here's my dashboard. Now, can't quite see it there. Do I have enough room on my screen? Well, no, I don't. But here's the good thing about SAP Business One. Once you've configured the dashboard exactly the way you want it, you can go up here into the menu and by simply clicking on this little triangle here that's sitting on its side, that will pack that away to one side and it will give you even more screen space to work with. And so then what I can do if I wanted to is I could now just spend a little bit of time just resizing these dashboards until I get them exactly the way that I want them. Or of course, I can go up here and on window, I can tell the system to auto arrange all of the widgets for me. Okay, and you can see it's quickly just dragged those out to the way it thinks they should be. And then I can resize these a little bit more, drag this one across, I'll pull my open documents across here, I'll move my messages and alerts up here. So you can have hours of endless fun moving things around on your screen until you get it exactly the way that you want it. But that's the secret to SAP Business One. You can customize the system to meet your specific requirements and again to your specific roles. Now remember, I said that we also deliver a number of pre-built cockpits. So if I simply go here and choose my cockpit again, I can, for example, say, well, I'm in the service department and if I choose the service cockpit, you'll see what it now does is it has a pre-built set of those widgets, pre-built common functions, pre-built open documents, but the dashboards is just going to ask me which of your service dashboards do you want to have access to here. So I'm going to say, well, this is for service, so I'll choose service call, and then I'll click OK, and so now I have a picture of all of the outstanding service calls and my service call history. So again, Role-based functionality, very, very important in SAP Business One. So that's great. You've now got an idea of how the dashboards work. Let's go back and let's go to my home cockpit. Again, I can go in here and I can minimize this screen down. What I'm going to do now is take you through some of the specific functionality from a user interface perspective because, again, one of the things that our customers tell us that they want, and we have more than 40,000 customers in small and mid-sized businesses just like yours who are using our system, we get their feedback and we put that into the product. And what they tell us is important is the ability to tailor the system specifically to their requirements. So I'm going to look a little bit of more detail at how you might do that yourself. So when you're in the system and you're in your main menu, couple of the things you need to be aware of. Across the top here, we have a toolbar. Now, the great thing about this toolbar is that it is context sensitive. So what do I mean by context sensitive? It knows what you're doing at any particular point in time and will display different functionality for you accordingly. So let's look at a specific example. In SAP Business One, every organization which you do business with is called a business partner. Whether it's a customer, whether it's a supplier or vendor, or whether it's a lead or an opportunity that you're working with. So I go in here into my business partner master function, simply click here, and you'll see this is my business partner master data. 
Now, the purpose of this demonstration is not to train you in how to use SAP Business One, so I'm not gonna go into infinite detail in how every single one of these screens work, because that's available in other videos that you'll have access to. But in the master data screens, we work on the basis that when you first open master data, you're gonna go looking for some information. So that's why the master data screen opens up in what we call find mode. So it assumes you're gonna go looking for some information. So how do you find information in the system? Well, you can click on pretty much any one of these fields and start searching. So for example, I know that the customer that I'm looking for at this particular point is called Earthshaker but I'm not sure what the full name is or if it's Earthshaker as one word or it's two words. So I can go here and I can start typing as much as I know and then I can press enter. And if there's multiple customers with the word Earth in their name, I'll get a list of them. But in this case, there's only one customer called Earthshaker, so up they come. And now you're looking at one of our standard screens in SAP Business One. Again, the secret to this is once you know how to navigate in one screen in SAP Business One, you know how to navigate through all of them. What does that mean to you? Well, fundamentally, that means that the cost of training is significantly less because you don't have to train people how to use every different screen. Once they know how to use one and they know how to use that functionality, then it's very easy for them to pick up and start working with the other screens. So for example, I'm looking here at Earthshaker. You'll see now up on my toolbar, I've got new functionality which is available. So for example, I can click up here and I can go back to find mode by simply clicking on my little binoculars icon. Or I can go here into add mode by simply clicking on my page. If I wanna move through all those records, I can use my, let's call them video buttons for the sake of uh, giving them a name, so I can use these video buttons. I can go to my next record, next record, previous record, I can go to the first record in the system, or I can go to the last record in the system, and you'll see how quick Business One is with retrieving that data. And why is that? Because we're running on our SAP HANA technology which is an in-memory database. What is in-memory database technology all about? Well, fundamentally, all of your data gets loaded up into main memory on the server. So rather than the system having to go to mechanical hard disks to retrieve that information, it's incredibly fast because it just pulls that straight out of main memory. We'll talk a little bit more about the significance of that later when I start showing you how to customize dashboards and how to look at some of that business intelligence. But you can now see I have the ability to navigate quickly and easily through my records. One other aspect of SAP Business One that's really worth pointing out is what we call our enterprise search. Now, most people these days who have worked on the internet are familiar with the search engine Google. And what does Google do? It goes out onto the internet and it searches all kinds of information and pulls it together in a giant index. Well, SAP Business One has this functionality called Enterprise Search. And it's a little bit like a Google search engine for your SAP Business One data because it's built indexes and searches every single piece of information in your system. So how does it work? I simply go up here into my enterprise search bar and I can type in whatever the string is that I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for Earthshaker. Let's keep the same example. So I just type Earth and I can hit enter or I can click here on search. And what you'll see happen, my search result comes up and now you'll see every piece of information anywhere in the system that has the string Earth in it. So you can see I'm seeing all my credit notes for Earthshaker. I can see my business partner master record for Earthshaker. I can see the contact people at Earthshaker Corporation. But in this case, what I, get, what I can do is I can go here and I can say, well, I'm looking for the business partner and I wanna find all the related information. So I simply click on find related and what does it do? It brings up my business partner master data and then it shows me that I have six opportunities, 31 sales orders, 
25 sales invoices, two contacts, there are four open service calls for Earthshaker and so on. So it's really bringing everything together for you. Give you an example, you're the CEO, you're about to ring your customer at Earthshaker. They're going to expect you to know everything about what's going on with their account. And now with the enterprise search functionality in SAP Business One, you have access to that. Because in one click, no matter whether there are one record or 1,000 records, they will all be available for you here and you can drill down to them instantly. So if the customer starts asking you questions about the sales orders, again, one click, there's all of the open sales orders. If they start asking you about sales order 150, one click gives you the ability to drill down and open up sales order 150. And there's all the information about sales order 150. Just close that screen down. So that's the enterprise search. And remember, that's all the information inside SAP Business One. So if I'm looking for product, for example, let's close those down, and I'm looking for, uh, I know it's an IBM printer, or it's a printer of some kind, I can type in the word printer and press enter, and again, I now get all the information that's related to the word printer. And of course, you can see right now, I've got a lot of information in here, okay? more than 61 screens full of information that contains the word printer. So again, all I have to do is hover over and click on any one of these and it will take me straight away to that information. Again, that's the power of SAP HANA, giving us that instant access to information. So if I go here into Accounts Payable Credit Note, for example, I can choose Find Related and the same thing works here it shows me all the related information. So you can see on this credit note, there's actually five items that were on this credit note. Uh, it relates to one business partner, and that's normally the situation, one credit note to one business partner. And it's related to one contact at that business partner. So even if I had five, six, seven different contacts at the business partner, this credit note relates to one of them because I spoke to that one particular uh, contact at the business partner about this credit note. So let's say I now want to look at that business partner. Again, all I have to do is select the business partner information and then I double click on that field or on that object and now the business partner information is across here. And you can see when I hover over the business partner, I can now see that I've got 33 purchase orders for that business partner, 31 accounts payable invoices, two credit notes, and so on. Um, now again, remember, this business partner, this is an example of a supplier. Business partners in SAP Business One, customers, suppliers, and leads, all under that same uh, object type, which again makes it easier to manage the entire system. So there you go, that's uh, another example of how you can use the enterprise search. So let's close that down now. Let's go back into our business partner master screen and I'm going to show you some of the other aspects of the user interface that make it really, really easy to use. I'm going to find my Earthshaker Corporation again. So I can go in here and for example, if I'm not quite sure exactly who I'm looking for, I can just put an asterisk here, which is a wildcard search. And then I press enter and you can see it automatically comes up with a list of all the business partners in the system. So I can select that, double click, and there's my business partner, Earthshaker Corporation. Now in SAP Business One, we have the ability to quickly jump to information. What we have, and we call it different things, uh, I like to call it my golden arrows, because gold is very valuable, and the golden arrows drill you down to additional uh, valuable information. So for example, you can see up here for Earthshaker Corporation, they owe me $40,000. I've got $26,000 worth of uh, deliveries outstanding for them, and I've got $19,000 worth of open orders. If I want to now look and see what all those open orders are, one click on the golden arrow there now brings up those open orders for me. So I can see I actually have three open orders. If I want to drill down and open up one of those specific orders, again, golden arrow, one click, there is that sales order. Now this sales order has 
three inventory items on it. I want to look at one of those particular inventory items, so I'm saying, all right, give me more information about that inventory item. One click, and what am I now looking at? This is now the item master data. So I can drill right back down to that item master data, and whilst I'm here, I can now even start looking at other information, right? Purchasing information, sales information, and stock information. How much stock have I got in each one of my warehouses? And of course, I'm able to drill down and look at the detailed information about the warehouse. Here's the warehouse, all the warehouse information. And I can even go in here because we have that mapping functionality right throughout the entire system. I can click here and say show the location in the web browser. And what it will do, it will open up a web browser screen. It will open up Google Maps because I've told the system that I want to use Google Maps. But you can use Bing Maps. Uh, and it will bring up that specific information for you and it will give you the ability to map out directions and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details, but you'll see Google Maps has just been updated in the last two days. It's even automatically aware of the fact that Google Maps has been updated, and that's the advantage of SAP Business One, is you're able to not only use the functionality in the Business One software, but you can take advantage of the, app, of the functionality in other web-based applications. And it's going to sound a little bit like one of those television uh, late night presenters, but wait, there's more. Uh, one of the widgets you can use is what we call the browser widget. And the browser widget enables you to embed that web functionality inside SAP Business One. So again, very, very powerful. But you can now see I've got quite a lot of information on the screen. Uh, so I can simply close down some of these other screens that I've drilled down to. So that was that drill down functionality that we were looking at there. Again, the secret to that, making sure that you've got access to all the information that you need as and when you need it. I talked about CRM. We have CRM functionality right throughout the entire application. That's why when you're looking at SAP Business One, you won't ever actually see a screen that says CRM. Why? Because customers are an integral part of every business. So the functionality to track and manage the relationships with those customers is an integral part of every piece of functionality in Business One. So what specifically do I mean by that? You'll see when I've got a customer open in the system, it's got this button down here which says you can also. Well, you can also view all of the related service calls. You can view related activities. You can view related recurring transactions or I can create an activity. So let's keep going with our CEO example. I'm on the phone to the customer. I want to make a note of the fact that I made a phone call to the customer. So I go in here and I say create activity. So what's the activity type? Well, this is a phone call. It's automatically linked to all of the underlying information for this customer. I can specify different kinds of phone calls. In my sample data now, I just have a generic description called general. So this is a general phone call, and then I'm able to predefine certain subjects for my phone calls. So for example, I can say that this is a phone call that is a follow-up. And again, during the implementation process of SAP Business One, your SAP partner is going to sit down and work with you and define most of these things and preset them for you. But of course, if you have the rights, you can go in and you can create additional ones, just the same as I'm doing right now. So this is a follow-up call, so I'll say update. And that's now saved in there. Now, don't know if you've noticed, but every time I do something in SAP Business One and it's worked, down the bottom I just get a little message telling me the operation was successful. So we're always giving you a complete picture of exactly what's going on and making sure that everything's working as expected. So here we go. It's a follow-up call. It's assigned to me, Richard Duffy, because I am the super user in the system. I'm the user who's uh, working on this at the moment. But I can record this on behalf of somebody else. So you could have somebody in your team whose job it is to keep a track of all these things and you just keep a manual log, for example, and you send them the manual log and they key those in for you. Again, not necessarily the most uh, effective way to use the system, but again, 
we don't want to make any prejudgments, if you like, about how you're going to use SAP Business One. You have total control over the way that you utilize the system to match your business processes. Business One has a series of best practice business processes configured already into the system out of the box. However, uh, one of the things that you can do, of course, is you can customize all of those business processes. A little bit more about that when we start talking about workflows. So here is my activity. Right, what was it? Well, it was a call, so now I'm going to record some details. Uh, and this was a follow-up call with Bob to see how the relationship is progressing. All right, now, don't know if you noticed that, it stopped taking uh, input from the keyboard it flashed up a little red message. Why? Because there's only a certain amount of information I can put into this field. Now, if you're sitting there going, well, gee, how much? If you look down the bottom here and keep your eye on this bottom part of the screen, when I hover the mouse over any one of these fields, it shows me exactly how much information I can show. So you can see this is the details field and it can have 60 characters. All right, so what do I do? Well, I'll just want to adjust this follow-up call with Bob so that's enough because that's kind of like a header but I can now start recording additional detailed information so I go here to content now I can type up to 72,000 characters of information in here and that should be more than enough not quite enough to write war and peace but hopefully your activities don't generate that much uh, that much information it automatically records the start time and it can automatically record the ending time because what you'll notice is this will be progressively ticking over uh, as I have this screen open. Now, what I'm able to do is I can also schedule a follow-up. So I can record this information. So I'll say add. So that's now, this phone call is now recorded. Let's go and double check it. If I close that down. So, I can now go back in here and say you can also view related activities and there you have it. There is the phone call that I just made to Bob that's now been recorded. I can open up that activity. So I want to schedule a follow-up phone call now, except I'm going to allocate this follow-up phone call to somebody else in my organization. And here's a list of all of the people inside the organization. I'm going to allocate this to Carlos and I'm going to get him to do it in a couple of days. So I just simply pick the start time and I'll say I want Carlos to follow this up on the 25th, which is Wednesday, and I'm going to get him to do that at 9 a.m. Okay, I think it's going to take around about 15 minutes and I want to give Carlos a reminder 15 minutes ahead of that. So that's all fine. I can also schedule a recurring follow-up, so I can say I want this to happen every week because I want to schedule a regular follow-up call uh, with Bob, but in this case, it's just a one-off, so I say there's no recurrence. I'll say add, and that's now done, and I'll say OK. So I now have uh, additional activities there that are scheduled. So if I go in here now and I say view related activities, you can see the activity that I did plus now the activity that is scheduled. And the good thing about SAP Business One is that you have up here on the toolbar, you can look at your calendar and you can see all of these things mapped out. Let's just maximize that or resize it, make it a little bit bigger. And I can see, I wanna see all my activities for the week, for the month, whatever the case may be. And if you work with Microsoft Outlook, SAP Business One can automatically synchronize all of the activities in Outlook with Business One and all the activities in Business One into Microsoft Outlook. So you've got the best of both worlds. Let's just close down our calendar now. So what have I shown you so far? We've looked at, so I'm just going to do a quick checkpoint. We've looked at the user interface. We've looked at the dashboard functionality. We've looked at how we customize those cockpits. We've taken a quick look 
at the general user interface in SAP Business One and we've looked at the drill down functionality. I'm going to go and I'm now going to show you a little bit more specific information. Let's take a look now at the sales order entry functionality. Let's close down my business partner master data. Let's go from start to finish through a complete sales order to cash process. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create a sales quote. I'm going to turn that quote into an order. I'm going to turn the order into an invoice and then we're going to receive a payment from the customer for that invoice. Now the good thing about SAP Business One is that you can include or exclude any one of those steps in the process. I'm going to start off by going in and creating a sales quotation. So how do I do that? I simply go here to my common functions and then I will choose my customer. Let's stick with Earthshaker because it's one we've already worked with. But if I don't know who the customer is, I can click here and I can immediately do a lookup or I'm able to go down here to the name and I can just start typing in the name and you'll see what happens in the background is HANA automatically starts finding people that have that information in the name. So that's the customer I want, it's Earthshaker. Now who's my contact person? Who am I giving the quotation to? Again, if I've got multiple contacts, I can select them here. So this is a quote for Emily Powers. Has the customer got a reference number? They have a reference number that they've quoted me. Uh, could you please quote our contract 58? So I'll put in here contract 58, so that's all fine. I can go across here and I can say, when is this valid until? And anywhere where there is a date field, I can use a picker. I can say this is valid until the 31st of October. And then Business One is also multiple currency. So I'm able to choose the different currencies that I want to work with, the currency that the business partner has, my local currency that I'm working with, or we can also track a system currency. In this case, I'm going to use the business partner currency and I can modify that according to my needs. So right now this is US dollar, but it could also be Canadian dollar, euros, basically business one will track and manage every single foreign currency uh, that you want to handle. And it can track those on the basis of a particular exchange rate for a range of dates, or you can even update it on a daily basis. And you can use web services to automatically have those updated from your currency provider or your exchange rate provider of choice. But in this case, I'm going to leave that as US dollars. Now, what do they want? They've asked me, can you provide me some IBM printers? So again, I go in here, I do a lookup. And they're interested in knowing, uh, or they're interested in receiving a quote for the IBM InfoPrint 1312. Now the system's automatically showing me that I have 851 in stock. So I'll just select that. So there you have it, it's on there, very quick, very easy. Now if I have the rights, I'm able to go in now and I can override the price, or I can give them a percentage discount, or there's all kinds of different things that I can do inside this screen. Again, not training you how to use SAP Business One, but I want to show you uh, some of the additional functionality that's particularly important. Anywhere uh, in these screens, you have the ability to right click. And when you right click, it'll show you the additional functionality that's available to you. So one of the things that I really like here is you can go in and see all the other times when this customer has purchased this product. Let me give you the scenario. You've got Emily on the phone and she says, well, you know, Richard, last time we bought that IBM info print from you, we actually only paid $300 for that. Now, in some systems, you would have to say, well, Emily, let me give you a call back. I'm going to need to go and check on that for you. So you hang up the phone, go and dig around in the system and try and find out, and then you ring Emily back. Well, with SAP Business One, using the power of SAP HANA, all I do is I right click here and I go in here and I say, show me all of the times that this customer has purchased this. So I go here to the last prices functionality and it now says for this customer, 
for this product, here are all the times when you've transacted with them. You can say, show me the last 10 prices. And you can even narrow it down and you can say, all right, show me all these different transaction types and what the price was for each of those different transactions. So I'm just interested in when did I actually sell it to them. So I can now remove all these other documents. And I can say, okay, well, Emily, actually, um, you purchased that product from us on the 18th uh, and you purchased three and at that stage we did charge you $500. So right now I can't find uh, a situation where we have sold that to you for $300. So Emily might say, oh, okay, well, can you do me a better price? Yep, let me have a look at that and see what I can do. So I'll close that down. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I don't send the company broke. So I wanna make sure I've got a good margin on my product. Again, by right clicking, I can choose the gross profit functionality and it'll show me right now on the basis of a $500 sale price, I've got a base price of $303.01. So my gross profit is $196.99 and that's a gross profit percentage um, that you can see is showing up in here. So I can now say, you know what? All right, on the basis of that, uh, I can do some discounting. But the great thing about this is, you can also go in here and you can say, all right, I wanna look at what my gross profit is based on all of these other different prices. So I might have different price lists. So I can say, well, if I give Emily my um, distributor sales price, so this is a price list, you'll see there is my distributor price. Well, wow, uh, the base price is 500, so I'm not making any money there. So um, I can go in and of course I can play with all these different options, but let's just say, all right, we're just gonna cancel out of there. And we're gonna look at that gross profit. And by the way, I don't just have to right click. You'll notice up here, I also have specific functions available for me on my toolbar that are related to the field that I'm on right now. So I can choose that particular piece of information from up here on the toolbar. In this case though, I will go in here. Not only can I right click, if you're a person who likes to keep your hands on the keyboard and you like to use keyboard equivalents for everything, well guess what? Control tab gives you the, exactly the same functionality. And hopefully you just noticed, it's remembered what the last settings were that I used. So there it is, okay? In this case, that's my last prices. That wasn't what I wanted there. Control tab. Um, I can go in and I can look at my gross profit field. All right, so right click, choose gross profit. There it is. $303 is my base price. There is my sale price. So I'm gonna give her an additional discount. So. Emily, I can give you a 10% discount on that. So you put in your 10%, that's all fine. And then you can now go on to the next line. Now I've shown you a lot of different pieces of functionality there from just that one line. And you might be now scratching your head going, hang on, do I have to do every single thing that you just did just to quickly put in a line? No, you don't. Very, very simple. If you know the product code, you can just type it in. Pick it from a list, there it is, IBM InfoPrint 13, 12, Emily wants 10, bang, that's it, I'm ready to go. It's that quick and easy, all right? So the secret to using SAP Business One is that you can make it as simple or as, I wouldn't use the word complex, because it's not about complexity, it's about giving you the access to the functionality that you want. So you can make it as simple or as functionally rich as you want to for the users. So you'll notice there's, there's also other fields that are available to me here on this screen. So I can go in here and I can uh, adapt and adjust the information that's on here. Let's go and we're gonna save that now, all right? So that's my sales quotation that's now been created. So what do I do? I can now go with that sales quotation and with one click, 
I'm able to go and print that sales quotation. I can click here on the email function and I can email it out to Emily Powers automatically along with a little note here. There's the data. Okay, so that's the related transaction. And I can go ahead and I can add uh, a word version of the quote or I can create the quote as a PDF document and send that to Emily if I want to. So it makes it very, very simple. And now what I can also do, I might want to send a copy of this quote to somebody else inside the organization. So I can say add recipient and I can say I want to send a copy of this to Bob shown as well. So I simply select Bob from the list there and say OK. And so now Bob is also going to get a copy of this email with the quotation as well. So very powerful functionality. I'm going to cancel that though because I don't want to send it out. And now what I can do is I've got Sophie on the phone. She's just rung me back in. She received the quotation. Oh, by the way, she received the quotation. What did the quotation look like? I'll give you a quick snapshot. I click up here on my print preview function. Now you're going to see a standard version of uh, one of those document layouts here. The good thing about SAP Business One is you have the capability to modify every single one of these print layouts to match the requirements that you have. So um, in order to do that, you simply use either our print layout designer or you can use Crystal Reports. And what you're seeing now is an example of a Crystal Report document which can be as graphically rich as you want. So you can incorporate logos, you can incorporate product pictures, you can incorporate, for example, product data sheets for each of the products on the quote. You really have total flexibility there. But there is uh, the report layout. And if you want to change that, you can certainly do that. How do you do it? Very, very simply. You go up here and you click on the layout designer and it brings you in to the tool that enables you to change that layout. You pick the document layout that you want and choose manage layout and away you go. But I'm not going to go into detail in that. But I just wanted to make sure that you understood that all of those layouts, like everything in SAP Business One, can be customized to meet your specific requirements. So here's my sales quotation. I've got Emily on the phone and she said, you know what, we want to go ahead with that, can we place an order? Well, do you have to rekey all of that? Do you have to go into a different screen? No. With SAP Business One, down here you just say copy to sales order. Now you'll also notice here, I can copy this to a delivery or an accounts receivable invoice or even what we call a reservation or a reserve invoice. That's because you might just want to go straight to invoice. You don't have a necessity to create sales orders because you know you've got the stock. Okay? You just want to go straight to the invoice. Maybe Emily has come into your warehouse to pick up the goods and you don't want to have to keep her waiting while you go through the sales order and then turn it into a delivery and then turn the delivery into an invoice. So you can just go here straight to accounts receivable invoice. In this scenario though, I'm going to take it to a sales order. So I choose sales order. You can see it's now created the sales order and it's telling me this sales order is based on sales quotation number 248. So that's great. I now say add. Notice down the bottom here, it's giving me a little message. The delivery date is missing. When do I want to deliver it? Well, I want to deliver it on Monday. So I'll choose Monday's date and now I'll say add. Now it's just saying, do you want to update the existing rows with that delivery date? Because I might have set up a delivery schedule. This line I want to deliver on such and such a date, this line on a different date and so on. So it's just giving me the ability to update them all or leave the existing delivery dates as specified. So I'll say, yep, I want to update all of the rows with that new delivery date and then I'll say add. So the idea behind that is Business One is constantly looking at what you're doing and making sure that based on your business rules and your business processes that the number of mistakes that you make are minimized. 
So it's almost like having somebody sitting there looking over your shoulder, making sure that your business rules are being followed. So here you go, here's the delivery schedule details. It's giving me the ability to specify this, saying, okay, here's the delivery date. You've got one, when do you want that delivered? So I can pick my delivery proposal is that I want to deliver that on Monday, so that's fine. Now, what is this doing? This is doing what we call available to promise. So inside SAP Business One, the system has the ability to give you a really detailed picture of when you can deliver product. Not only that, with SAP Business One version for HANA, there's an advanced available to promise module, or we actually call it an extreme app. And what that extreme app allows you to do is go in and look at all of the orders that you have and be able to reallocate stock. So if you have a customer who rings you up, a really, really important customer, and you need to decide when you can, or whether you can take stock from somebody else's order and give it to them, you can do really complex calculations on the fly and have those happen really, really quickly. So I'm just gonna confirm that for now. And for this one, I'm actually gonna have the same delivery date for this one, it's the 16th. And I'm gonna update that as well. And now I'll say, okay. So they're all good. I'll say add. I'll now go ahead. And that sales order has now been completed. So I've got my sales order, started off from a quotation, now turned it into a sales order. Well, what's the next step? Well, the next step is to turn it into a delivery. So I can either do that one at a time, or inside SAP Business One, we have complete batch functionality as well. So let's say it's midday, I now wanna take all of the sales orders that have been flagged for delivery and turn all of those into, del into deliveries. Well, I can do that using a very simple wizard-driven process. Or I can then later in the day, just before the goods are all ready to ship out, or after they've shipped out, I can produce all of my sales invoices in a batch. Or I can produce my sales invoices at the same time as the deliveries because I include my sales uh, invoices with my goods. So again, you just determine together with your SAP Business One partner during the planning phase for your implementation how you wanna do it and they'll make the necessary configuration uh, adjustments into the system for you. All right, so that's fine, that's my sales order. I'm now gonna copy that, I'm gonna skip the delivery process, right? I'm gonna go straight to an AR invoice. So I now say copy it to an accounts receivable invoice, everything's fine, I go and I say add. Now it's saying, hey, the document total is zero. Continue, well no, why is the document total zero? Well, because I haven't completed my delivery step, okay, if I'd taken this to a delivery note and then to an invoice, it would be there. But because this is the case, I now need just to tell the system how many of these I'm actually invoicing out, all right? Again, I made sure that that popped up just so I could give you the, uh, the explanation of exactly what was happening there. So I'll say add. Now, at this point in time, we're now entering accounting transactions. Everything up until now didn't impact on the general ledger. This transaction will, so it's saying, you can't change the document after this. Now you can change, make changes, but you can't change the actual invoice you would have to put through some kind of adjustment transaction. So you can't just go in and change the document. Uh, so I'll say, do you want to continue? Yes. All right. Now, it's saying, hey, you cannot add this document because you're gonna only issue a certain number of these on a certain date. So again, I specified that delivery schedule and now it's telling me, hey, you've already specified a delivery schedule for this. So I can go in if I want to and override that and then process that accounts receivable invoice. So I've created my sales order. What's the next step? I'm now gonna take it across and I'm gonna copy this now to a delivery. So I simply go here and say copy to delivery. Opens up the delivery for me. There it is, got one of that item and 10 of that item. And I'll say add. It's telling me, hey, you're about to create some uh, general ledger transactions now as soon as you do the, the delivery. 
do you want to go ahead? And I'll say yes. And my delivery has now been processed successfully. So next step, after the delivery has been done, I can batch invoice this at the end of the day with all the other deliveries, or I might just want to create a one-off invoice. So that's what I'm going to do here. So now I copy my delivery to an account receivable invoice. There it is. I've delivered one and 10. Everything else looks good. So I simply say add. Once again, general ledger transactions being created and that's it. That's the entire process going from sales quotation to order, order to delivery, delivery to invoice. Now what's the next step? Well, hopefully you're gonna get paid for the order. So let's go ahead and let's process the payment now. If I close down these screens, because again, I'm finished now in that, uh, in that process. I want to process a payment. So how do I process a payment? Well, I simply go in here into my banking module. I go in, I'll say I want to process an incoming payment. And here it is, here's my incoming payments. Now this is going to be a payment from Earthshaker. I pick Earthshaker here. And you'll get a list of all of the outstanding invoices for Earthshaker. Let's just make this a little bit bigger just so we can see them. Now I've got a couple of choices. I can put in the dollar value amount that I've received in the payment, or I can select the transactions and then it'll tell me how much I should have received. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am just gonna process that invoice for today. So I'll select that one and you can see that was a total of $5,821.69. So I go in here now and I will put in a reference. So this is the reference number for the payment. So I'll say uh, reference 34. And then the next thing I want to do is tell it specifically how did I receive that payment. In order to do that, I go up here and I choose my payment means because Business One will allow me to accept a payment from a payment by check, payment by credit card, cash even, or a mixture of all of those different things. Or you can even process payments that have been direct debited into your bank account. So in this particular scenario, I've received a check. It's automatically picked up which account it needs to go in. Uh, I put in my check number that the uh, customer has given me and then I can record the amount. Now I can type in the amount manually or I can simply um, just move forwards and it will do it will automatically allocate the check amount. But in this case I'm going to type it in manually 5821.69. So that's my check amount, because again, remember, I might have a split payment. They've given me some from this check, some from a credit card, or maybe multiple checks to pay it. Again, the secret here, flexibility. So I say, okay, that's my payment means. I've selected the invoice that it's gonna go against. Now, you might get a payment and you don't know what the customer is paying because you can't figure it out and they didn't send you a remittance advice. Good thing about SAP Business One, you can just process that payment on account and then come back and allocate it in a second step. But that's the one I want, so I'll now say add. Again, general ledger transactions being posted. I'll say add. And that's now done, quickly and easily. So that's the entire order to cash process. Let's take a look now and go back and get a full picture of exactly what's happened. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look up Earthshaker. So I go into my enterprise search, gonna find Earthshaker. And there they are. Okay, there's my customer, Earthshaker. I can go in here and I can say find related. Again, it's gonna open up my uh, enterprise search. There's my business partner. So I can double click on that and it will bring that business partner across into my screen. And now I can see all the sales orders, 
all the sales invoices, everything like that. Go and look at my sales orders. My most recent sales order, here it is, that's the one we've just done. I can open that up and I can drill down to the sales order. Now one of the great things about SAP Business One is that I'm now looking at the uh, sales order, but I'm thinking, okay, what were the other documents that were related to this? Well, you can simply right click on the screen here and you can show what we call a relationship map. Now I'm gonna make this take up the whole screen just so I can explain it to you. So with any transaction in SAP Business One, you can bring up this relationship map and it will show you all of the associated transactions and how they flowed through. So you can see for this business partner, Earthshaker, I created sales quotation number 248. That was turned into order number 247, which was turned into delivery number 246, which was turned into accounts receivable invoice number 225, which was paid with payment number 72. So I've got that complete picture of everything and I can go in here and just double click on any one of these transactions and it will drill me down to that underlying transaction. I'm also able to choose different ways of viewing my relationship map. So I can say, show me this based on the posting details. So here's my sales order. I can view that information and then I can look at all of the underlying accounting information. How did that transaction get posted through the general ledger? Or I can go in here and say, show me the marketing documents with all the related items. And again, there you have it. It's showing me the related items on that document, which in this case is my IBM info print. All right, so it makes it very, very easy for you to track everything that's going on with all of these transactions, okay? So that's the entire audit to cash process. Now, that's great that you can get all that information, but it's not just about the information that you can put in, but it's also about how you get that information out. So what I'd like to do right now is give you a quick view of how you can utilize the business intelligence functionality in SAP Business One and build your own dashboards which will represent all the information in the system graphically. Let's say I now want to be in a situation where I can view all of my revenue information. There's a couple of different ways I can do that with SAP Business One. Let's go back to my cockpit and let's look at my home cockpit. I'm going to minimize my menu across again. And now what you'll see in the system is that if I go in here and I choose refresh, you'll now notice in these dashboards that I'm now starting to get information coming in. So remember, I've just processed a transaction and that transaction is now automatically coming up inside my dashboards. But I wanna create my own dashboard. I just wanna get a simple one. Let's say I wanna see uh, sales by customer. How would I do that? Well, I go up here into tools and I go and I choose my dashboard designer. Once the dashboard designer is open, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna choose where is this information going to come from? Do I want to use an existing query from SAP Business One? Do I want to create a new query? Do I um, want to use one of what we call our existing semantic layers? And a semantic layer is just a representation of the underlying information. And what do I mean? When you're working with a database, of any kind, and most ERP systems, most business management systems fundamentally sit on top of a database. As you probably know, databases consist of different tables. So the information can be stored in these different tables that have relationships between the tables. So when you want to get that information out, you have to know what the relationships are between those tables. If you've got very complex relationships, take an invoice for example, 
header information in one table, uh, footer information in another table, inventory lines in another table. Those inventory lines have sales, uh, have serial number information, they're in other tables. You can end up having a query which has to pull information from five or six different tables. It gets quite complex. Well, one of the advantages of SAP Business One version for HANA is that we provide these semantic layers, which what we do is we just publish one view of all that information. So we'll call it sales analysis. And that sales analysis view has all that information automatically built for you. All those background table linkages and everything is already defined. So I'm going to use that particular view for building this dashboard. So that's one of our analytic views. So I go in here and I say analytic view, and there it is. It's my sales revenue. So I simply choose that. So there you have it. Let's wrap up. What did we look at? Well, we started off by looking at the general user interface of SAP Business One. And you'll remember we looked at the cockpit functionality. We then looked at the common functions widget, how you can quickly and easily just map in the functionality that you need to use. We then looked at the different dashboards, bringing those into the cockpit. And then we took a look at the specific functionality in SAP Business One, things like the drill down capability using the golden arrows. And then we went right through the entire order to cash process. Now, obviously, there's a lot more functionality in SAP Business One. And in other demonstrations that you'll have access to, we'll be going and looking at some of those things in more detail.